Hi there, this is Tim with a Rogue System video. Now, Rogue System is a hardcore, I'll say that again, hardcore space simulation from Image Space Incorporated that's being developed by Digits Crossed Interactive. Now, Digits Crossed Interactive is effectively a one-man band. Um, he tried to um, get this going on Kickstarter, was not successful, and because he worked for the people that I work for, which is Image Space Incorporated, uh, we decided to fund him anyway, effectively, um, up to this point anyway. Um, and uh, basically that's why I, I have an internal build, which is um, for the for developers, early testers, etc. And I'm just going to take you through the second tutorial, which is effectively startup and undock. Now the startup might seem incredibly complex, and it is, because this is this is an incredibly complex um, simulation that uh, the developer has tried to think through. Um, just about every single aspect of it and um, basically the, it, it, it's a manual startup that you're going to see so that's me clicking every button waiting for all of the levels to rise etc etc now um, he does say that uh, later on there will be certain kind of assists um, for certain aspects of this where you can tell the ship's computer to do this startup routine but the important thing there is that when this when the ship does this startup routine it's going to have to go through these steps so it's not literally a kind of um you know power on power off scenario it's it's still got the background simulation going now here i'm just uh, getting myself secure in my seat um putting the instrument lighting on so that i can see things even though they're not turned on and uh, now we're going to be begin the startup procedure effectively. Now, first of all, you need somewhere for the power to go after you produce it. So you need to get your batteries online. And here on that panel there, you could see that um, I was producing uh, less than I was using. So that's why the alarm sounded. I silenced the alarm. And um, obviously now I have to go and uh, just give some emergency power effectively. I'm going to use my maintenance power and now you can see that the available amount is more than the load and those warning lights have gone off on the left side there and I have a surplus of power that's coming from the backup power so I'm gonna uh, basically divert that into my batteries and um, obviously store it rather than just kind of losing it And uh, you have a primary and secondary bus that um, that uh, basically the electronics go through. And you can see I'm not producing enough on the uh, secondary bus. I'm producing enough on the primary, but not on the secondary. So um, I'm going to uh, reroute some of the power. Okay, that warning light just went off. Okay, so now I'm um, going to activate, um, activate the fuel cells. Fuel cells beginning to warm up there. If you need time to read the text at the top of the screen, do feel free to pause. Uh, you don't have to go at my pace. I've uh, run through this tutorial a number of times, so I'm probably a little bit quicker than uh, I was at first. Okay, that's the first loop. Okay, it's both pumps enabled, and yeah, those warning lights are off, and 
by the end of uh, the startup procedure, um, those lights all should be off, uh, I think. Uh, enable the communication system because I am actually docked with a space station now even though you can't see any stars you're going to see why in a little while but I'm just going to check in with uh, the space station or rather sp uh, space traffic control and I'm checked in I'm going to request departure clearance Okay, and they've, got, uh, they've said to notify control before LENR initiation, which is basically uh, I cannot power up my nuclear reactor um, until they tell me. Just waiting for the EM shield to build up. I've got to bring the core temperature up before I can start the reaction. So that's what I've just started there. But before I actually start the reaction, I need hydrogen. So that's what I'm working on now. Got to uh, enable all of the pumps there. And I'm just going to cycle through each tank just to make sure that uh, each one is actually active. You can see it there. Yes. And got to give a fuel source. Okay, so we have a fuel source and a, and a reactant tank um, all set up. And the core temperature is pretty much where it needs to be. Still in the red, but um, we should be able to to uh, get going with something else. Now, I said that you can't see any stars. It looks very black out there. Well, the reason for that is because um, all of these unrealistic glass domes that you see in space simulations um, kind of annoyed the person who developed this simulation. Uh, he didn't feel it was realistic. so we have monitors on the inside that show the outside view and these monitors can be knocked out and um, basically if you are in combat or something like that you can get the monitors knocked out and then you're completely blind and you have to fly by instruments now I'm going to turn on some of the instruments right now this is the external docking uh, UI or hood and um, not UI, it's just a hood basically, um, where it tells you obviously the orientation that, uh, that that you need to actually dock or undock with an external uh, hub. And the navigation view, we are the third planet out, that's us right there and there's the planet that we're orbiting. Okay, I'm going to go to the communications page, and the communications page is very, very important. Um, essentially, everything in space has a frequency, uh, whether it's the magnetic field of a planet or um, a particular kind of docking hatch on a space station or the space station itself. Everything has a frequency. Um, channel 1, Channel 2, I wouldn't really change those. They are specific to you and um, specific kind of for private messaging. Channel 3 and 4 are for you to use to uh, set specific targets. Just going through the tutorial here where it's going to um, tell me to set them. And show me how to change them basically.
Okay, and it looks like the core is pretty much up to temperature where I could actually activate it now. But remember, we needed permission to do that. So we're going to contact Space Traffic Control, tell them that we are ready. And they've said yes, so we're going to uh, activate the fuel cutoff and um, obviously supply this uh, reactor with what it needs to react. And we're going to make sure that the power is getting through to both of the uh, system buses, or bus, I'm not sure what the plural of bus is in a electronics sense. Yeah, they're, they're both good. So, um, like it's actually saying in the tutorial right now, most stations will have a hatch that you fly into, but this tutorial is an external uh, undock. Just uh, powering on my engines. There's actually a couple of different type of engines and one of them they don't really want you to use near the space station. But I'm uh, just going to let them know that I'm ready to leave. And they're going to give me frequencies of um, kind of important physical objects that uh, I need to um, basically communicate with. If you miss it in the message, it's actually in a log, which is quite handy. But um, I'm ready for it, so I shouldn't. And it says 4523. and set. So you can see that channel 3 now says that. And then channel 4, 45, 2, 202. And set. So I should get spring-loaded, kind of pushed, pushed away from the space station any second now. Yeah, I can still see it, so watch for that. Oh, there we go. Okay, just going to wait for a little bit of distance. That should be enough. the radiators it's telling me to. <laughs> I have to switch to the system one. There we go, that's that radiator. And I have to get to uh, 0.2 kilometers before I can activate my, uh, let's call them main engines. Ignite. Oops, have to hold it down. Okay, and that was <laughs> the very basic uh, startup and undock procedure, which, like I said, um, should be dealt with by a ship computer at some point. That's part of what I love about this. I feel like I did when I was a teenager playing Frontier Elite 2 without a docking computer. 
that's the feeling that this has given me and um, I don't really feel like I can give it a better compliment than that you know this feels special and um, I'll be back with uh, probably an Elite Dangerous video at some point and um, maybe a docking video of this if I manage not to screw it up anytime soon um, okay thank you bye bye